The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I come to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's on. Okay. So I'm glad I don't have to preach on that about beheadings. Um, the reason being is because, as we know today, uh, the focus is on Ephesians. We are uh, beginning our sermon series for the next seven weeks. We are going to get to know the Ephesians. Our lectionary will lead us on this journey, so that's built into our lectionary. Um, and so we will walk through what is Paul saying to the Ephesians, but more importantly, what is Paul saying to St. Mary's in 2021? What do we have in common with the Ephesians? What can we learn from this group of young followers of Jesus in a very diverse community and a very divided context? I think we can learn a lot. So today you heard from this opening part of the letter, which is like a, like it's a poem. It starts off and it's just so gorgeous. If you don't get anything out of the sermon, which might not be much, but at least you'll get this. Get the first part of Ephesians. This, this opening passage, it rinse and repeat it every day because this is the crowning gem of who you are and why you are. Paul, let's, so let's get a little context. Paul is, is in prison, so he's not in Ephesus. And we all know what happens when you put men and women of God in prison. They sometimes write some of their best works. Uh, Martin Luther King wrote uh, letters from a Birmingham jail. Some people regard this as one of his greatest pieces of work. You do that, what else are you going to do in prison, right? Nothing but lift weights and read books and write letters, right? Uh, Paul wrote some of his best letters in prison. And it's important to notice context because he is not living a life of luxury. He is getting beat up. He's probably sitting in his own poop. The Roman prisons were not the Ritz-Carlton, far, far, far from it. And yet he sings and writes about such beauty and grace in following Jesus Christ. That's the kind of faith we want. That no matter what circumstances are in our life, we can still say, glory be to God. For I am chosen and I am predestined by God to do great things. That's what this letter opens up with today. So this uh, community that he has been called to speak to, this community is, uh, so Ephesus, so we know from Acts 12, in Acts 12, Paul goes to Ephesus. Paul starts preaching the word. Paul converts people. He starts a Christian movement there. It's not called Christianity then. It's just called the followers of Jesus, the way. They call it the way. And uh, Ephesus is a bustling city. It is the place of Artemis. So from a pagan perspective, huge, big temples towards Artemis and towards other gods and goddesses. But Artemis was the main show in town. Pagans, there's people, different ethnicities, there's Jews, and then there's these wacky uh, you know, followers of Jesus. So within the Jesus movement, and this is what Paul's mission is that God placed upon him, is that you <clears throat> in the Jesus movement at this time have half which are Jews. Paul's a Jew. Born a Jew, died a Jew, right? This, this is, these are, well, he actually didn't die a Jew, father of Jesus, sorry. Um, Jesus was born a Jew, died a Jew. Um, so this, you got all these Jews. These Jews have a culture. They have a, a, a different language, speak Hebrew, right, during their worship. Uh, they, they, they have an ethnicity. Some would say a race. They're Jewish. Then over here, you have all these Gentiles who are not Jewish. They don't speak Hebrew. They don't celebrate Yom Kippur. They don't celebrate the big feast days. They used to worship Artemis. Maybe they were pagans. Maybe they did not believe at all. Now they're unified by Jesus. So now go figure out some worship together and go do community together. I mean, just imagine this. So, I mean, we've started a relationship with Temple Beth Chaim, and I think uh, Rabbi Durbin would find this very funny, um, that if this idea, we have a close enough relationship where I can hypothetically say this out loud, that if uh, all of a sudden he said, you know what, at Temple Beth Chaim, We've discovered that we found the Messiah, and it is Jesus. And we're like, oh my gosh, all right. Well, let's start worshiping together. We, we, we all agree on Jesus, let's do it. How's that going to happen? Do you realize the amount of, I mean, you know this, the amount of culture and historicity, uh, history that goes into being a Jew? And now you're just going to say, well, let's just throw half of that away, and let's just play some praise music and sing some hymns from the 82 hymnal. Would that work for you, Rabbi? No. 
right? This is the issue that Paul is dealing with. Because Judaism, you're talking about the chosen people. God chose the Jews. And now they got to let in these other back alley cats who just say, hey, I like Jesus. Right? That, this, is a, this, is, this, is Paul's, this is Paul's mission. How do we find unity in this? And then after Pentecost, now you got people who are black, white, different colors, different shades, different ethnicities, different languages. So it's, just, it's, it's more, you know what? It's America. <laughs> That's what he's dealing with. And Paul is saying in here, guess what? You focus on the gift that's been given to you by Jesus Christ, and you're going to be okay. The minute you start getting distracted by all the other stuff, you're done. Jesus follows the way of Abraham all the way to David. He fulfills the Jewish law. He fulfills the Mosaic law. And he is here to gift us for us to be redeemed, as it says in Scripture. A Messiah has come. God has loved us so much. God so loved the, uh, the, 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 us so much they gave his only son. He gave his son. What does that mean? So the God in the heavens said, these people, my children, they need to be redeemed. They're too lost in their sin. They're too lost in their guilt. They're too lost in their ways. They're worshiping other gods. They're doing things they shouldn't be doing. They're getting lost. They're not happy. They're not content. They're aimless. They're living a way of death. So I'm going to send my son to come and replenish and he will fulfill the law and then unite them all. Remember Jesus says when he was talking in John, he says, you know, I have another flock over here that I need to go and I'll bring them and there'll be one flock. He's talking about the Gentiles. That's what he's talking about. I'm, I need to go get them. So what does it mean now that Paul's trying to save them? He, this, this opening part is just sort of like a, it's, a, it, it's like a big cheerleading thing. He's like a big rah-rah. Because the second half of the letter is Paul telling Ephesus, now you've got to go on and do the work. You've got to go on and serve in the love, by, by the love of Jesus. But first, you've got to get one thing set. You are reconciled by God. You are chosen by God. He uses that word over and over again. This is where John Calvin gets in the mix because he starts saying that you're predestined. And I'm not going to have a, con you know, I'm, this is not a sermon about Calvinism and predestination and are you a Calvinist or Arminius? That's, that's, you can do that on your own time. My whole point here is that you've been predestined and chosen by Jesus Christ to build his kingdom. Can you accept that? That God chose you. You're not a random creation. You're not a survivalist just trying to make it in today's day and age. God predestined you. God chose you to be part of his royal priesthood. This is not my language. This is the Bible talking. Chose you so you can go follow his way of love through Jesus Christ. That no matter what you have going on in your life, no matter what circumstances are going on, no matter what your history is, no matter what you did on the way here to church, you are redeemed and forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. You are made new into a new creation. And if you keep on following Jesus in that new creation, you become so overwhelmed in his grace and in his love, all you want to do is transform this world into a world of love. That realization that we sometimes and often forget the continuous way of digesting and receiving this love of Jesus inside of us and the transformation of our hearts through Jesus Christ. No other way but Jesus. No other way. Jesus has to be first. When we do that, it changes our hearts. It changes our minds. It makes us aware of our own prejudices. It makes us aware of our own parts of us that make us a jerk, <laughs> that make us selfish, that makes us arrogant, that makes us prideful. And we say, Jesus, I, want, I am a new creation. Help me take that away. Help me be a better son or a daughter of God. Help me be a better mother. Help me to be a better husband. Help me be a brother or sister. Help me be a better colleague. And help me be a better neighbor. The way of love is what changes and unifies this world. And Jesus weeps to know that the one thing that should you be knighting all of us, which is him, is what divides us the most sometimes. Division seems to be the hot thing. <laughs> We're tribalistic people. Jesus came to end the tribes. No more 12 tribes of Israel. There's just Jesus. Sunday still seems to be the most segregated day of the week. It doesn't have to be that way. Why? Because we have to commit and say, where does Jesus come? So we can forget about all these other things that try to distract us and say we're just a divided culture. That's fooey. That's what culture says. That's what the news says. That's not the truth cosmically of who we are through Jesus Christ.
But Jesus has to be at the head, not our fears, not our worries, not our concerns. And when we trust him, just, just as St. Marian's, we love this stuff. We love getting out of our comfort zone. We love going out to the community because we love growing into Jesus and... Okay, good. I want to make sure you guys are still asleep. I may still awake. <laughs> we love to reach out with love. Look at, look at the series we got going on right now. We have a series, A Lunch and Learn, with Rabbi Durbin. That's all I started out with. Hoping to get 12 people. Let's talk about Judaism. Judaism 101. First Thursday shows up, 35 of you come. Matthew Durbin's there. Rabbi Durbin starts talking to you about Judaism. Word gets out. Last Thursday, 50. 50 plus show up. Thursday at 12 o'clock, 50 people plus show up. And this time, it's not just Gentiles. Now, we have Jews from Temple Beth Hayam coming over to St. Mary's to break bread and sit at tables and talk about faith. The buzz in that room and the sense of love in that room, also acknowledging that we're just different people, which is great. Just because unity does not mean uniformity. Unity does not mean uniformity. We don't need to be the same. It's great that we're different. It's great that we're diverse. But we can do it in love. And that's how we grow. And so now, here's the best thing that's come out of this so far. Two people, two people so far have said, because of this experience, I have fallen away from the temple, and now I'm going back to temple. I need to get back with God. I need to get back in my community. I need to be back worshiping my Lord. Like, glory be, hallelujah. Word, it's the way of Jesus is not like, well, Father Christian, they didn't come to Jesus, though. I, I, I didn't see that part yet here in Ephesus, in Ephesians. He's talking about, we know we're chosen, and we're, choose, we're chosen to go out and be, follow the way of love. Because what you're going to find in the second part of this letter, he's not saying go out and start hitting the Bible over people's heads and make sure every Jew becomes a, becomes a believer. You've got to walk with compassion. You've got to walk with patience. You've got to walk with grace. You've got to walk with selflessness. That's the way of love. Speak the gospel every day when necessary. Use words. Live it. Walk it. Behave like the gospel's inside you because it is inside you because you have been chosen to be his kingdom builder. So when we do that, now we have a third time. Our next class is going to be this Thursday. I'm sure there'll be even more people. Jews and Gentiles sitting together, loving each other, talking about their differences in a joyous way. And the beauty of that is the timing is perfect because the Department of Justice just came out with their latest thing about the number one um, hate crime right now that's happening in America are anti-Semitic crimes. Well, I'm sure our friends down the street don't feel pretty safe. I'm sure they feel pretty fearful. So who better to be there and say, I want to be in community with you and know how you're doing, but followers of Jesus because it's the following of love. That's the way of Jesus. We've been so overwhelmed by God's love, our heart breaks with anyone who's hurting. So here we are in this community. Where we're all together checking in with each other, praying together, Jews and Gentiles. It's right there. It's right around the corner. We've done the same thing with our prayer walks with our friends in East Stewart. We go and form community. We're united by Jesus there. That one's easier because Jesus is the way. You're a Baptist. You're from the AME. We're different. The way we do things, we look different. We talk different. We sing different. We follow the same Jesus. Let's praise God. Let's go pray for our neighborhoods. Let's go do Alpha together. Let's go do Bible studies together. Let's go preach at each other's churches together. Jesus is the way. All the other differences melt away. Actually, the differences are good. They make us better. New perspectives. So we have a lot to learn from Ephesians. We have a lot to learn from this community that's full of diversity and there's the temptation of division because it's a temptation. It's erroneous, this division, the tribalism. It's a distraction. Don't buy into it. It sells in the media, the division. That's what sells. Unity, love, compassion doesn't sell, unfortunately. But we are following the way of Jesus Christ. So first and foremost, know that you are chosen. Do you believe that you have been chosen by God? That you have been given a purpose by God? That you have been having the gospel embedded in your heart? The Holy Spirit lives within you and has redeemed you and forgiven you of all of your sins. Do you believe that? And you accept that overwhelming love that God has for you? Because if you do, the way of Christ is ready for you to go build this kingdom. 
We at St. Mary's are going to do our part to follow Jesus boldly in our community. So if St. Mary's was taken away somehow, the people would miss us and say, there's love gone in our community. So we'll keep on trying new things, throwing stuff at the wall, see what happens, doing lunch and learns, doing prayer walks, getting out there to showing a flag of the unifying power of Jesus Christ. That, we have the book. Of how we unify, we have the book. It's right here. And we have a leader, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he's called all of us to build this kingdom with him. You are chosen. You are predestined for this work. No matter what your past is, no matter what your gifts are, God will work through you and all of us together to build this kingdom of love and peace and compassion through the power of Jesus Christ. It's going to be a great seven weeks. Rinse and repeat the Ephesians, this first part, chapter 1. And we'll be back for part 2 tomorrow to see where God is calling us in Martin County. Amen.